Today I'm going to be showing you how to make my Lumi CD coaster. It is Lumit and we use old um, CDs or DVDs that have been damaged or, um, or just out of date. So, and you have a nice sturdy CD, um, coaster to put your drinks on and then the um, moisture will not soak through. So let's get started. So what we'll need for this coaster is the all-in-one loom or you can also use the Martha Stewart loom um, set up with uh, 32 pegs so um, or any other small gauge 3 8 inch loom that's at 32 pegs. Um, of course your loom tool will need some uh, worsted weight uh, cotton yarn. You can use acrylics but I like the cotton better for um, anything that's going to be soaking up liquids. And then you will need an old um, CD or DVD. This one I had made, I had burnt some music on um, a playlist, um, and now it's all scratched up, um, and I don't need it anymore, or just any kind of old CD um, or DVD that's either um, um, scratched up or like old um, uh, software CDs that don't work on your computers anymore um, you know from long ago if you still have them around and you can use those you can repaint the side with the label if you want there is some spray paints out there that will adhere to plastic you can spray paint it over or you can just leave it like it is just whatever okay so first thing we're going to do is we're going to do our slip knot and we are going to be doing a drawstring cast on. Now there's a couple of different ways you can do this, but what we're going to do is we're going to do it every other peg. We're going to start um, for three rows knitting every other peg, and then we're going to end with knitting every other peg. So in order to do the drawstring cast on, what we're going to do is we're going to start off with our first peg, and I'll put my um, my slip knot on this peg over here. I'm using that as my anchor. As you can see, I've got my 32 pegs set up over here. So what we're going to do is we're going to bring our working yarn in front of that one, and then since we're going to be doing it every other peg, in order to do the drawstring, we would be skipping this one. So, in order to do it so in order to do a drawstring cast on every other peg you will put your working yarn in front of this one skip one two three do four put it in front of the fourth one so that it'll be this one and then this one and then that one so one two three and then four one two three and then bring it in front of four. One, two, three. Bring it in front of four. Oops. One, two, three. One, two, three. And then bring it in front of four. I am looking forward to the new um, looms from Knitting Board. And because then we can use the sock loom for this, the new uh, sock loom number two, and we can, uh, won't have the end on there, and it'll be easier to work with. One, two, three, and in front of four. Okay, one, two, three, and then in front of four. Two, three, and in front of four. And then we are back, see so we've got this three, one, two, three. And then that one would be your fourth one, which is where we started at. So just make sure that that's behind there. Now then, what we're going to do here 
is we are going to uh, then we're back at peg one we're going to knit that one over then and then we're going to come along and then we're going to skip one and then bring our working yarn to the front and then we're going to go to then we're going to skip one and then knit over and then skip one and bring your working yarn to the front and then skip one and then we will knit over and then skip one and bring your working yarn to the front seat now by doing this we are going to have a loop so to speak on every other peg now then get this around here and then skip one get it in frame knit over skip one bring your working yarn to the front skip one and knit over oops there we go skip one bring your working yarn to the front yes and the kids are home for summer skip one knit over and skip one bring your working yarn to the front skip one knit over and i cannot do this at night when they're asleep so skip one bring your working yarn to the front now then we're back to our inside part skip one knit over and then skip one bring your working yarn to the front now then take it around the back of that one and then back around that first peg you will see that i still have my slip knot still on this anchor peg so you will leave it there until after you knit around at least the first time okay so now we will do rows one through two and you will just knit over just a U wrap or a flat knit, whichever you prefer. Knit over the things for two rows, and then I will meet back up with you. Okay, I just finished row two or round two, and I'm going to go ahead and take my slip knot off. I'm just going to leave that hanging right there. And then we've got round three is still. Uh, you're still knitting every other one, but instead of uh, carrying your yarn behind the peg like we did for the first two rows, you're going to carry it to the front of the peg. And that way you're going to add your loop for those pegs for the rest of the time. It's like your increases or whatever. And, uh, and the reason that we're doing every other peg is so that whenever we gather at the ends then you won't they won't be as bunchy in the uh yeah yeah new word there bunchy in the middle on the gathered spot for your uh, whenever you gather it up sorry about that being so close and out of focus and i will finish row three and meet back up with you okay i just finished round three you see where this last peg that was skipped i'll just bring my working yarn in front of it i've taken my slip knot off already as you've seen and we are getting ready for round four so rounds four through eleven are all knit so on this one you'll just have that in front but we're treating that as a loop so you will just knit all of the pegs and um, on round four through eleven and then i will meet back up with you